Meine sehr verehrten Damen und Herren, so klar, dass Ihnen möglich ist, bitte erheben Sie sich nun für die Nationalhymnen. Wir beginnen mit unseren Gästen aus dem Kurs. Okay, you can choose. Blue. Blue? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Blue? Okay. okay. You have the ball? Okay. Good luck. Good luck. Captain. Photo, Liebe Fußballfreunde, es ist das erste Länderspiel des Jahres, deshalb lasst uns bitte gemeinsam einen Moment innehalten. Am 7. Januar mussten wir von Franz Beckenbauer, 72 und Europameister, Weltmeister 74 und 90 als Trainer Abschied nehmen, einer der größten Sportler unserer Zeit. Die Tour für Generationen von Spielern. Nur sechs Wochen später, am 20. Februar, lag sein Freund und Weltmeister, Torschützen von 1990, Andi Bremer, einen Herzstillstand. 
Der deutsche Fußballbund, die Fußballfamilie, wir alle, wir verneigen uns vor diesen Legenden des deutschen Fußballs, vor diesen herausragenden Persönlichkeiten auf und neben dem Platz. Wir werden ihr Andenken wahren, ihre Leistungen ehren und sie als Menschen in unseren Herzen tragen. Ich darf Sie um einen großen Applaus bitten für Franz Beckenbauer und Andi Röhler. Look like Germany are set up in more of a 3 4 3 now. And Metz Kleinebeckel and Ari Embi looking up that back three. Rull and Tioma acting as uh, midfield slash wing backs. of support here for the German under 21s in the Kenwood Stadium. Yeah. 
Thomas Knopf has to uh, find a way past Avdili. Stands his ground well. Germany able to win the ball back in a promising position here. The shot from distance. And Eric Martel, the captain, deciding to have a go. Sees his shot blocked on the ball again here. There's Rocker Wright. Knopf. Only one touch football here from Germany. Ball into the middle. Man in Ruhl just can't create the space to get the shot off in the end though. Germany still piling on the pressure. It's Kosovo struggling to get it out. Early ball in towards the back post. Ansgar Knauf closest to it, but just a little too much height and distance on it. Equally so. Fatjan Bunyaku. Kosovo at number nine there. There's Antonio Di Salvo watching on. Really happy to have his team back together after a fair few months away. The question is, can they pick up where they left off? Which was in fine form, to say the least. Two uh, big wins the last time the team came together in November of last year. 4-1 win at home against Estonia. 3-1 win at home against their closest rivals in the group, Poland. Certainly do love uh, playing on the home soil, this under-21 side. Toughest test so far was away to Bulgaria in October. They managed to come out 3 2 winners of that in the end up. A much better corner that time from right, but unable to find a teammate in the box. Kosovo awarded the free kick deep inside their own half, which will give their defence a chance to catch a breather. Didn't look like there was uh, too much in that challenge from Brian Gruder. Mainz midfielder or attacking winger, if you like. He's really established himself as a first-team regular with Mainz. Has uh, become a, a go-to player for Di Salvo here for the under-21s as well. Got the feeling he's not too far away from a, a senior call-up. Can sometimes be a, a double-edged sword if you're the manager of the under-21 side. Your players who uh, do really well. There's always a risk they get called up to the first team. They're no longer available to you. Of course, you're happy for them. That's the developer, the development, excuse me, you want them to have in their career. But then it does mean that you go without. There's Luca Nets. Merlin Röhl. Germany absolutely dominating possession and almost 10 minutes gone also we're doing their best to try and make it difficult trying to really crowd the edge of the penalty area and nearly fell kindly there for Röhl misplaced pass by Rocco Wright, and then and yeah, tactical foul. Jan Tielma knew exactly what he was doing there. Not allowing Kosovo to break quickly, which is probably their best chance of getting forward and into 
that final third. Really had too many opportunities to try and build anything from open play. And again, give the ball away immediately as Germany come forward again. Here is Tilma. Makoko. Action for Makoko, a young uh, Dortmund forward. What a record he has in terms of goal scoring for the under 21s. 12 goals in just 11 appearances. At youth level, I don't think there's anyone better in terms of stats. A little off target, the ball there in towards Mukoko from Rocco Reitz. Has seen quite a bit of the ball already. The Borussia Mönchengladbach midfielder Reitz. Martel. Everything going as expected so far. Germany with a lot of the ball looking to find an opening, break down this Kosovo defence. Uh, so far, they're standing their ground well. Question is, how long can they do that for? Koko tries to dance his way through. Wasn't too far away from finding a little gap to work with. Close control, but just too many defenders around him in the end. Able to pick his pocket in the nick of time. Jonas Urbik does well to come out early, reads that situation. for the 1-2 there with Luca Nets. And again, the Kosovo body in the way. And they're doing their best to try and draw some of these Kosovo players out of position, try and create openings constantly, trying to feed one into the middle, then back out, looking for a link-up play, little 1-2s in and around the edge of the penalty area. So far, struggled uh, to find that breakthrough. Makoko. Again, all just a little too close for comforts. Kosovo looking to try and uh, break quickly here. And Luka Nets does extremely well, even if the uh, free kick does go uh, Kosovo's way in the end. Now perhaps a bit of uh, space to work with. Kosovo caught in possession. Don't have the chance to get players back behind the ball. The effort from Rocco Wright perhaps a little rushed. Perhaps a little excited. Had some space opening up. Could have perhaps tried to bring a teammate into play. Ansgar Knauf out to his left. Would have perhaps been the better option. Instead it goes for goal. Never 
Really strikes the ball cleanly to uh, trouble Abdullah who in goal. Spell of possession here for the visitors. Kosovo are currently down in fourth. They're just eight points to their name. They'll need to uh, win the majority of their remaining games if they do want to stand a chance, of course, it is the first place teams of every group and then the three best runners up will move on to the Euros in Slovakia. making just his third appearance for the Germany under-21s. Does have two goals in his only two appearances already, though. Not a bad return. Well, the Borussia Mönchengladbach midfielder. Does really cover a lot of ground out there. A real box-to-box -box player. Uh, another look. Only uh, shot on target so far for Germany. Wasn't terribly hit. I suppose if he puts that either side of Mustafa Abdullah who in goal. Might have found himself in a bit of trouble. Once it came straight down the middle. Is that life made easy for the Kosovo shot stopper? still have work to do it's not a bad effort there at all by Gruda difficult one to take well, on the move Full throttle, tries to volley it on the spin as well. Did well to even make contact with the ball, to be fair. Bunyaku brought down. And these are the sort of situations Kosovo will look to really try and take advantage of, these dead ball situations. Does give them the opportunity to try and get balls into the box. Interesting to see. They end up playing this short, I'll just try and launch one forward. I would presume the latter will be the option they go for. It certainly looks that way. As uh, Milot Avdili lines this one up, in comes the ball. I tell you what, does end up finding Arian Lukiki. Just couldn't control it as it came off his thigh and then away from him, unable to get a shot off. Noah Atubolu. 
usual number one in goal. Watching on from the bench today, which also includes Siebert, Brown, H. Berger, the new boy Atomchu, as well as Nabel, Voltemada, Armindo Sieb, and Tresoldi. A lovely touch by Tielman. Tries to cut it back, but it's well read in the end by the Kosovo defence. Letai doing extremely well. Garuda just leading with that left shoulder there. Afrim Tavrilani, the man in charge on this Kosovo under 21 side. Won't be too happy with that ball from his keeper. Already inviting the pressure. Germany looking to press quickly, try and take advantage. Will keep Kosovo pegged back deep inside their own half. Twenty-one and a half minutes gone. Good run. A too much weight on that pass, though. Let's try to keep it in play, but can't hold on to possession. Germany managed to get it back anyway, though. Seems to be a bit of a recurring theme here in this first half. Martel. Little dink inside. Not dealt with initially. does ever so well has been one of the most impressive players for me during this qualification campaign Luca Nets such a reliable player in that left back position loves to get forward as well has a great delivery in his locker Daniele Cifi, the 39-year-old Italian in charge of proceedings today. So most recently, the fourth official in the Europa League matchup between West Ham United and Freiburg. Otherwise, at home. Serie A and Serie B in Italy. Doesn't mind dishing out the cards, yellows especially. Something that Germany will have to uh, be aware of. Beckel has uh, gone down here. And, uh, thankfully, Kosovo not able to make much of that opportunity. Fachion Bunyaku, the uh, number nine, 
Unable to get any real power behind that left-footed effort. Zach Lineberger has remained down here. He lands very heavy on that left knee. He sort of jumps across Bunyaku. Hopefully nothing too serious for the Holstein kill defender. And this is fifth appearance for the under-21s. Does have a goal to his name as well. Colin Noah Kleinebeckel. I don't think there's any contact. It's right there. He just lands on his knee. You can just see it give way slightly. It goes uh, down, clutching it straight away. It's uh, more of a heavy landing at a, a bit of an angle as well, which is the problem. He's back on his feet, but he's not going to be able to continue. So we do wish him a very, a very speedy recovery. Not what you like to see, especially not this early into a game as well. He's such a vital player for Antonio Di Salvo at the back. It'll be interesting to see who he brings on to replace him. Perhaps uh, Nathaniel Brown might be the uh, go-to option here. Germany currently playing a man down. Martel, the uh, captain at the moment, just slotting uh, back alongside Ariembi. Position that Martel can play and play well, of course. Another individual that is just so versatile. So it will be Siebert coming on. Jamil Siebert, the Fortuna Dusseldorf player, to make his third appearance for the under-21s. Melin Rule. Oh, Ansgar Knauf tries to get the cross in, looking for Mukoko. Aerial side of the game, not necessarily his strength. Has scored one or two headers in his time, though. too serious and nothing he can't come back from sometime soon that's not a bad ball across the face of goals there but Kosovo not necessarily willing to have too many players venture forward and Knauf not quite on the same page there and Kosovo might be in trouble here Mokoko 
offside flag does eventually go up as the ball came back to Rue. Does well to pick the ball off there. And, uh, trying to find Mukoko. And, uh, clearly offside when the ball came back his way. Jonas Siebert out on the pitch. To replace Kleinebeckel. Again, we wish him a speedy recovery. Lovely through ball. And that is a massive tackle by Hoti. One that needed to be made. Because the ball into the path of uh, Luca Nets. It's an absolutely sublime one there from Mukoko. Does well to time his run to perfection. Don't think he was offside there. And that is a vital interception. Was that Nets it was in on goal. Garuda with the cross. Siebert doing his best to try and get on the end of it. That is a strong play. Nothing wrong with that shoulder to shoulder. Is a contact sport. Mustn't forget that. Don't want to lose that part of the game either. Germany just starting to look a little bit more dangerous in these past few minutes. Lights with the cross. Can't get any height on it though. It's easily cleared. Germany will keep the pressure on with a throw in on this near side. Germany with over 80% of the uh, ball possession in this first half. Still just the one shot on target though. Now perhaps oh, Martel does get the shot off but leaves it a little late allowing the block to be made and then Adiembi puts the ball out of play for a Kosovo throw. It's almost a carbon copy of the first game between these two sides. Very similar first half. A lot of possession. Not too many shots on goal. That all changing in the second half of play though. Which I'm sure Di Salvo wouldn't mind happening again as long as the outcome is the same. But I'm sure he also wouldn't mind a goal in the first half to just give his side something to build on in the second. Germany will have a free kick here. Not sure what exactly happened there. Perhaps a late challenge after the cross went in. Possibly even a handball. With a deflection. Either way, Germany with a chance to try and swing one into the box here. Maybe Brian Gruda. 
left-footed in-swinger. Can be very useful here. With the cross, puts it in low. Plenty of pace and power behind it as well, but it's cleared at the near post. Not the worst idea. Our second ball has uh, come into play here. Will be a Germany ball, nevertheless. Under 10 minutes still to go in this first half. Mukoko lays it off to Knauf. Back with RDMB. Now Siebert, the substitute, forced into action due to that injury to Colin Noah Kleinebeckel. Run back well. Ball out wide. There's Thielmann dinks it in towards the back post. And at the feet of Ansgar Knaf tries to put it straight back in. Deflection takes it out to Rocco Wright. Martel. I wanted Luca Netz to uh, make a run. Instead, Netz putting the brakes on his run. And Ansgar Knaf bending his. A few metres out wide of where the ball eventually ended up. Again, really good early pressure on the ball there from Luca Netz. Knauf making a run down the left. Will deciding not to use him, instead bring Siebert into play. Jan Thielmann. Nets wins it back into Makoko. Makoko just can't get a hold of the ball there. It will be a goal kick in the end. Is Aydini. Lays it off, the Germany striker, and out for a goal kick. Actually comes off Ansgar Knauf in the end. Heavy touch there from Nets. First mistake he's really made. I think it'll be mixed emotions from Antonio Di Salvo. Happy with how his team has dominated possession, but a little disappointed with the fact they haven't been able to do all that much with it so far. As they say, patience is a virtue. That's 
It's a nice ball in towards net. Takes a touch. Zips one across the box. No one there to uh, take advantage of it though. Another ball in towards the back post. And this time uh, Mustafa Abdullah does well to get both hands on it. Interesting kick there from the keeper. Plenty of height, not a lot of distance though. Thinking towards Mukoko. And a heavy challenge on that Milo Avdili. Was probably Kosovo's standout player in the first meeting between the two as well. Their number 10 and captain. Very talented young man. Had uh, enough of the ball to really show it here today, though. A little more precise with that pass and the uh, break was on. It'll been a 3v3 there for Germany. A rare occurrence so far. Tiamat does extremely well. And now Germany can come powering forward. Great ball to pick out Röhl who gets the shot off. It's a, a really good block by Haka. It's all the pace off the shot. Strong play. Chance now, perhaps. Ansgar Knauf. Martel, the captain. I think it came off Knauf there. And will be a goal kick. Germany players getting in their own way. It's the right decision as well. Actually, it might have come off the course of a defender last. So you can understand the frustration. Two minutes added on. And 
Germany must have up for one more chance here before the break. Makoko needs to just dink one through for Röhl, but again, just so crowded. A close one-touch football. Needs to be absolutely spot on when there's that many defenders in and around you. It'll be a, a Germany corner. And they will have time to take it as well. Taking shorts. His nets lines up the shots. Just wouldn't dip back down for him though. Kosovo will probably be the happier of the two sides. Their game plan will have been, especially away from home, not to concede early. Keep themselves in it for as long as possible. So far, everything going to plan. Referee sticking exactly to the clock there. So at the break here in Chemnitz, nil-nil between Germany and Kosovo. It has been one-way traffic. Germany with over 80% of the possession. Six shots, just one of which on target. Still looking for that breakthrough in a very similar match to the first meeting between these two. Will it have a similar outcome? We'll have to wait and see. The second half is just around the corner. Make sure you join us for it in just a few.
So, a warm welcome back here in Chemnitz for the second half between Germany's under-21s and Kosovo's under-21s. This Euro qualifier in Group D. Still nil-nil between these two. Germany absolutely dominating the first half, but not really creating too many clear-cut opportunities, to be fair. As far as Kosovo are concerned, they've been able to uh, keep Germany out well. Gruda Gruda there in support tries to feed it back to Gruda he felt he was uh, hacked down unfairly there referee allowing uh, play to continue though incidentally no changes at the break Antonio Di Salvo's side Just the uh, one change during the game. Is that Colin Noah Kleiner Beckel? Replaced uh, by Jamal Siebert due to an injury inside the first quarter of hour of play. Mokoko, lovely first touch, quite clearly pulled back there by a uh, Hoti. Central defender, well aware what Mokoko can do when he finds a uh, bit of space to work with in and around the box probably one of the if not the most clinical finisher at under 21 level 12 goals in 11 games could do with another from the Dortmund striker here to just break the deadlock dead ball situation here for Germany early into the second half it's a bit of a strange distance out a little too far for a direct effort not too much of an angle to work with either for a floated ball over the top and into the box Mukoko on the volley it's a well worked free kick timed his run to perfection did well to make contact with the ball as well difficult to uh, try and drag it Back across towards goal. With that spin on it, taking it away from goal. It wasn't too far away from finding the target. Just couldn't quite wrap his boot around it properly, though. Best chance for Germany, though. Eric Martel wide to Gruda need to feed one into that bending run from Mokoko trying to sneak in behind the back of the defender Tillman. Mukoko able to control it, able to turn as well. Thought about taking the shot, didn't see too much space there. And decide, lays it off to Ansgar Knauf. He makes good contact on the shot, but looked like he just sliced his effort a little. Better look at it here. 
One touch to get it over onto his right foot and then just never curled back for him. Was always going white. Better from Germany though. Almost playing in a sort of 3 4 2 1 formation now. Röhl and Gruda just in behind Mukoko, Tillmann and Knauf coming from the wings. Luka Netz powering forward with the ball. Knauf gets the early ball in. It's headed away. We'll come to uh, Thielmann. Good decision to leave it for the uh, throw in. And acts quickly. Comes back to Thielmann. Cross comes in first time. Martel. Coco just drifting into an offside position. And the one worry you do have is the German players might get a little bit frustrated that they haven't found that breakthrough yet. Need to make sure they keep their chins up, stick to the job at hand. That sort of mental strength and determination that saw them through the last time these two teams met. Germany coming away with a 3 0 win in Kosovo. As uh, Mustafi Abdullah has shown a yellow card for time wasting here. Seems a little early for that. Possible here. That's a really good play. By uh, Siebert. Recognised the danger straight away. Got across. And got the tackle in. Saw that RDM Bay was in trouble there. Nice no time. And just nicking the ball away from Fatjon Bunyaku. And Kosovo number nine. And just didn't have enough time to get a shot off. That's how quick. Siebert was in getting across, putting the pressure on him. A little bit of afters here between Reitz and Emil Yahoo. Quick to get across and support his teammates, if that's what you want to call it. Siebert. Lovely ball to pick out Knauf. Great first touch as well from the Frankfurt winger. Now right into Makoko. Tries to keep the move going. But again, just all are too close for comfort. On the edge of that penalty area. Germany back on the ball here though. Into Mukoko. Tries to flick it over the defender, but the flag does go up.
Well, the longer the game goes on, the more legs will start to tire. More space will become available. Knauf gets the cross in. Again, too much height on it, though. Well, you feel that if Germany are going to be going for balls into the box from wide positions, then perhaps Yusufa Mokoko needs a bit of support in there. Voltemada would be a great option, of course. Nick Voltemada, the number 10. He does bring that height and aerial threat to the table. Israel invites the challenge and will be a corner. Kuda's delivery is a really good one right into that danger zone. Chance here for Knauf. It takes a deflection back across the middle and is then cleared. And the flag has gone up again. And the offside might have been in the second phase of the action there, though. Unless it takes a... Uh, a touch off Rull on its way through. I don't think it does, but perhaps he was in a position that might have put the goalkeeper off as well. And credit to Mustafi Abdullah who had to adjust in the blink of an eye. I'm not sure he too, knew too much about it. Game does seem to be opening up a little more now, though. Break is on here. Rocco writes. Tries to bring Knauf into play, but left it a little too close to the defender, allowing the tackle to be made. I think that's been part of the problem as well. The final ball just hasn't been clinical enough. You feel Germany are edging closer. Great tackle. Part of... Uh, Rocco Reitz's game that perhaps goes a little unnoticed at times as well, defensively. It's such a big influence as well. And nearly comes through now, perhaps. Uh, just over and wide by uh, Merlin Röhl, who was perhaps a little surprised to see the ball come his way. Knauf into Mokoko. Goku tries to give it back to his former Dortmund teammate. The defender then helps it right into the path of Rue. Let's see what he was trying to do. Looking for that top right corner. And I tell you what, there was not a lot missing there. There seems to be a problem here for the... Possible half-time substitute, Veton Tusha. It'd be very unfortunate for him, having only been on the pitch for, what, a quarter of an hour, if that. Does look like he's going to be able to continue.
can see that space I'm talking about just a few moments ago. Germany able to get the ball forward into that final third a lot quicker than they were in the first half. Quite clearly not offside there, Luka Nets. Germany a little unfortunate with that decision. But to be fair, the uh, officiating team have done a pretty good job here today. They've tried to let the game flow. Easy catch in the end for Jonas Ubik. Jonas Ubik, the Kreuterfurt keeper, making just his third appearance at under-21 level here this evening. Ansgar Knauf tries to bulldoze his way through. And Nets does ever so well. It's a great play. Sadly, the pass that followed from Röhl, not quite matching it. There is Bunyaku, doesn't have too much support. Again, the ball is easily picked off. Rocco Wright getting back again. Showing off those defensive qualities as well. Knauf. Head up straight away. Tries to thread it through for a Mukoko, but again, not enough space for that. So it does go now, though. Tielman with the foul on Lugiki. Just comes through the back of the number 22. No ball to Nets. It's the cross in. Little too much height. Back to Makoko. And he puts it over on the half volley. Just snatched at it a little. Did come at him very quickly, though. And Nets definitely onside. Wasn't a bad ball from him either. And Garuda does really well to pick out Mukoko with the header back across the face of goal leaning back slightly just can't keep it down golden opportunity there for Mukoko to score his 13th goal for the under 21s and he knows it Chances are starting to rack up now. They're getting closer and closer each and every time. Gruda cuts inside, hacked down. Germany free kick. but asking for the yellow card which is not something you necessarily want to see but can understand the inquiry <laughs> two man walk or too far forward
the right and Garuda standing over this one. Garuda with the cross, a glancing header. Inches wide. That was uh, the captain, Eric Martel. Just let it skim off the top of his head. Kerul might have got a touch on it as well. Not a lot missing there. In Germany going a one nothing up. I think it's more than fair to say that Germany have been the better team. I think that goes without saying. As we all know, at the end of the day, there's only one stat that counts, and that is the scoreline. And at nil-nil, even if Kosovo have well, he had a look at goal, all it takes is one chance. Sometimes even a half chance. With 23 minutes or so still to go. Plus probably... Uh, a little bit of change on top of that as well. Everything's possible. It does look like Antonio De Salva is uh, getting ready to uh, bring on uh, Nick Voltemada. will give them another option going forward that's not to say he's very good with his feet and with the ball at his feet great with uh, link up play but he does bring that extra element of hold up play and then a threat in the air dead ball situations or crosses into the box and we've seen a fair few of those already in the second half from Germany there's Knauf just can't keep the ball in play though Looks like it's going to be Voltimade and Trisoldi. So, uh, two attacking options coming on. Abno Hassani getting ready to come on for Kosovo. But just gets his body in front of Veton Tusha there. Textbook defending from the big man Garuda. Able to ride the first challenge into a Mokoko. Lul tries to extend it to his left for Ansgar Knauf. Could have maybe taken the shot on, but couldn't quite get it out from underneath his feet. Before he just bring a stop to play with. This was number nine, Fatjan Bunyaku, down with a problem. Looks like Letai is down as well. Seems to be clutching the uh, hamstring area. Back of his right thigh, which is not a good sign. on his feet which would suggest he's able to continue so maybe not quite as bad as initially thought so, uh, a right coming off good shift in midfield from him Nick Voltimade coming on Germany going for broke here it would seem although Mokoko is coming off Trisoldi on to replace him 
One box-to-box -box midfielder and a front man coming off for two very attacking players. She sold it all from wide positions. Voltimada straight down the middle. Looks like Letai will be the player coming off. Now Abno Hassani to come on. Looks like the ball ran out of play there. Did it able to uh, keep it in? Knauf. That's with Voltimada in the middle now. We might see uh, a fair few crosses laid in by Germany as well. See that again. Great positional play. Probably would be beaten for pace over 100 meter dash up against Fadjon Bunyako, but because of his positioning there, able to get across, get in front of him, deal with the danger, and just settle things for Germany. This is the first choice today, brought on to replace the injured Kleinebeckel, but he's done a fantastic job since being out there. Playmaker role now. Is it Arocco Wrights no longer out there? Lean towards Trisoldi. Comes back out. Here's Tilma. Now Gruda. To the world. Right ball through. Oh, Tilma. She just can't get on the end of it. Comes back to Ruhl. Possible not dealing with the danger. Ooh, caught late there. No advantage played, or is it? RDMB. Floats one into an area where there's no white shirts to be seen a wasted opportunity that time apart from that defensively has had a cracking game and if he hasn't had all that much to do Quarter of an hour still to go here. Voltimada. Has that hold up play? Just can't hold on to the ball though. Now, cuts it back to Voltimade. From close range, has a stab at it. His first touch let it just drift away from him a little, which meant that when he tried to toe poke it, it was at full stretch. Mustafa Abdullahu able to come out, make himself big, and deny the big man. Would have surely been the winning goal here. Oh, 
Abdullahu called into action again. Possible keeper is keeping his side in this game at the moment. Great delivery. I think it's Martel who actually gets the header. Although it was aimed at Baltimore, who will be the target here again, I'm sure. I think that time difficult one as well had to take it just slightly in behind so moving away from goal Here's another look at that a martel header does it come off his shoulder no it does come off the head really well taken header equally impressive save by Abdullah might have gone in uh, just kissed the underside of the crossbar and gone in Does well there. The tackling coming. Gruda wait for the overlap from Thielman. Now, not a bad ball. Yes, to uh, look a little bit more desperate in some of their defending now. Buda. Siba went charging in. even at senior level. There's too many defenders who would want to see Jamal Siebert charging their way. Floated in. Well, what a beautiful attempt that was by Merlin Rue. Again, Abdullah comes up with a fingertip save there. Saw the opening. That was definitely going to be on target. Sani needs to be careful. Don't stay too close to Voltamada. Martel with the header this time. Well off target though. Looks like the Kosovo keeper. Who has a bit of a problem here. The right calf. I'm not sure if it's a bit of cramp setting in, some sort of a muscular strain. By the way, they uh, have Alton Gyoka available to come on as the backup keeper if required. The change they will be making right now is Ultion Bilali. coming off I think possible looking to try and hold on for a point now Abdullaho seems trying to continue confirmation of that change Dili off Bilal on.
Ruda. Quickly surrounded by three Kosovo players inside the center circle there. Ruda again, this time with a bit more space to work with. Moves it to Bull. Now Martel. It's going to Knauf. Inside to Baltimore. Martel gets the shot off, sees it blocked up. Bull feeds it out wide. Tilma. A lot of height and distance on that. Too much in the end. Well, Knauf does manage to keep the ball in play. It's Tusha. Yaku goes down, won't get the free kick though. Garuda caught late. Tackle starting to fly in left, right, and center now. Garuda has stayed down. Germany will keep the move going though. Now off into Voltimade. Kosovo will have the free kick. There will be a yellow card shown. For that tackle on Gruda in the build-up. We'll go over to Kriesiu. Sure, why he's uh, complaining. Have a look at it here. Exactly what he was doing there. Just completely wipes Grud out. Grud coming off and replaced uh, by Seep. Seep is under 21 debut. And the forward, perhaps, get a goal on his debut as well. What a story that would be. Oh, the Greuter for front man. Well gifted to the Royal there. Martel. Shifted out wide, Voltimade making a run, create some space. And flick on by Seep, his first touch. So can't find the intended target though. Five minutes still to go here. Five minutes plus stoppage time left for Germany. Try and get their fifth straight win here in the qualification group stage. late win no less than uh, what Germany deserve now with the cross to be fair you do have to give credit where it's due and Kosovo have defended their hearts out Voltimada it's got Knauf wanted the one two would have been an easy one to pull off for Voltimada to be fair to him
Sibats does well under pressure. RDMB to Sibats. Switches sides. And now with Thielma. Tries to get the early cross in. Well blocked, but keeps it in play. Seep. Just couldn't wrap his boot around it. Go out for a uh, Kosovo a goal kick. A little over two minutes of the 90 still to be played. As things stand, probably about three minutes of added time to be added on. Coming on now for Kosovo. So closing stages. Try and just shut up shop. Get that point on the board. Would be a big point in Germany for Kosovo. This they are in need of wins to secure qualification, but before kickoff, if you could offer them a, a goalless draw, they'd be more than happy to take it. Or would have been. It's past the first challenge, can't get past the second. A slightly better ball from Ruhl there, and Thielmann might have been in. To be fair to Ruhl, he stepped into that creative role very nicely. Since uh, Marco Reitz went off. It's a position he does feel very comfortable in, of course. Seabert's ball just a little too hot, far ahead of his teammate. 90 minutes just about up. cross just a little too far for Voltimada he's just getting ready to go and attack it six minutes added on is a little more than I thought it might be especially after there was only two in the first half and apart from substitutions there haven't been too many stoppages really that be a goal kick with a draw here today Germany will still have that one game in hand and uh, table toppers Poland if they win that will be a point ahead of Poland as well and Kosovo a late charge a corner to work with as well. Still with four minutes of stoppage time still to go here in Chemnitz. 
and Germany need to concentrate here. They worked so hard going forward. Can't forget about the defensive duty they have as well. It'd be absolutely devastating for them to concede here, especially with the way this game has unfolded. It's been one-way traffic from start to finish. And football can be a very, very cruel game at times. Here comes the delivery. Good header away. Now the breakaway is on. Big tackle. Danger not over yet, though. As Germany hold on to possession. Kosovo do have bodies back behind the ball now, though. Catch for the Kosovo keeper, been their best player today. Called upon on numerous occasions, Mustafi Abdullahu. Two or three really good saves, the ones that spring to mind. Yeah. Close range stop to deny a Voltimada. Tip over the crossbar to deny Eric Martel. His header off the corner. And Rose, lovely curling effort from the edge of the penalty area as well. Fingertips, tip save to stop that from going in as well. So Germany have had their chances. Abdullah has had a really good game in goal for Kosovo. Germany keeper doing ever so well there, not only with the clearing header, but takes on the collision as well, stands his ground. To the final minute now. And Germany must throw up one last opportunity. Thielmann. Well, intent in his movement there. Well, that way to Martel. And comes the cross from Martel, and there's the header for Sieb. And what a story that could have been on his debut. A winner in the dying seconds. Great delivery from Martel. It's a free header. He gets plenty of pace behind it. He just can't direct it either side of the keeper. He said it's a straight down the middles. Right down the middle. <laughs> Into the hands of Abba Adulahu. And that will be all she wrote. And wrap things up here in Chemnitz. Not the result. Antonio De Salvo on his side will have wanted or probably deserved. Plenty of opportunities to take all three points in the end. They will share the spoils with Kosovo, who become the first team to take points off this Germany side in Group D of the qualification stage for those 2025 Euros in Slovakia. A hard-fought game, a good test for Germany. Just couldn't find the breakthrough. So instead, we'll have to settle for the point, which now takes their tally to 13 as they remain in second behind Poland. But as already mentioned, do have that game in hand. 
And we'll take on Israel next in four days' time on the 26th. Same kickoff time as well. Make sure you join us for it. Thank you for joining us here this evening. We hope you've enjoyed it. And until next time, as always, stay safe and take care.